Hello friends and family and welcome back to another global pandemic crippling anxiety meditation hour that lasts 10 minutes. For anyone who doesn't know me personally, uh, these videos are not meditation instruction and I am not a meditation teacher. This is just a discussion about the practice of meditation and the effects of meditation in the periphery of meditation. Today I would like to discuss gratitude. I think that at the moment um, I personally am in a position where um, it would only be right for me to be extremely grateful um, given the present circumstances. When the pandemic hit, uh, my partner and I were actually in the middle of traveling. So we were away from anything that we could call a home and we were actually staying in a guest house, effectively a hotel. And friends of ours invited us to come to their home city and stay in an extra house that they had which was incredibly generous of them and has been a huge relief for us both financially and just in terms of basic stability um, because living in a hotel for months on end is uh, not the most stable or reassuring situation the abstract concept of gratitude really came into my mind um, very early in my meditation uh, career, as it were. It was actually a suggestion by an aunt of mine. I had suffered a uh, a fairly substantial eye injury. I'd fallen off of a bicycle and I had some retinal damage and then the surgery which was intended to correct that actually caused further problems and further damage and finally um, the ultimate <laughs> surgery, the last surgery I had, um, caused substantial damage, some, some blinding. and. Throughout this whole process, my aunt uh, sent me an email and her email was interestingly structured. Um, it addressed the idea that emotions fall on a sort of continuum and it was the philosophy behind um, these uh, ideas that she was putting forth that this continuum happened to be circular and that when you were on any portion of this circular continuum emotionally when you were feeling those emotions it was impossible for you to feel the emotions on the opposite side of the continuum. And now I have no idea if any of this is true or not. I don't believe that that theory is confirmed by neuroscience. However, uh, the proposition she put forth was that fear, um, which I certainly had a lot of at the time, as many of us do now, was on the polar opposite side of this circle to gratitude. And that while a person was feeling gratitude, it was um, biologically impossible for a person to simultaneously feel fear. And if we reason through that idea, if we rationalize it, it is 
clear that we don't generally feel these two emotions simultaneously. It is rare <laughs> that I could ever have even thought uh, of a situation wherein fear and gratitude were in close proximity. Sometimes gratitude comes uh, shortly after fear, um, but they don't tend to coexist. So uh, if you're in a car crash, you're afraid, um, in shock even, for a great deal of it. And then once the fear and the shock lifts, we tend to be fairly grateful um, just for our lives and limbs at that point. Um, so they can come adjacent to one another, but um, rarely overlapping, or perhaps never overlapping, it's hard to say. Not that I can think of. <laughs> um, and I found that I, I had an early nascent meditation practice at that point, and it was easier for me to use uh, gratitude as a sort of, um, as we've discussed before, fence. So I would meditate on my breath um, as best I could, and I would return to gratitude if I found my mind was slipping into feelings of uh, fear and anxiety and paranoia. And with a moment on gratitude, then I would be able to bring my attention back to the breath. And it was quite helpful and quite calming um, during a fairly stressful time in my life. There was little else I could do as well. Um, again, I was trapped in a hotel room <laughs> during this period. I was uh, trapped in California with no uh, way to get back to India or Canada. Um, where my various homes are. Um, it's a long story, but um, the surgery involved putting gas in my eye so I couldn't fly. Uh, the pressure would cause my eyeball to explode. So trapped in a hotel room, extremely light sensitive. So trapped in a dark hotel room. I had little else I could do but meditate. I couldn't read, I couldn't use a computer, I couldn't look at a phone screen couldn't watch TV. Um, and the this practice of using gratitude as a fence, I wasn't thinking of it like that at the time. I was actually thinking, let me just weave gratitude into my meditation practice, but it behaved as a fence, in effect. Um, was extremely useful. And I think that there are easier scientific experiments which can be run, uh, which involve concrete external gratitude exercises. Um, if you've ever looked at, uh, watched the um, YouTube channel Kyrgyzakt, I don't know how you pronounce Kyrgyzakt, <laughs> um, it's a, a German YouTube um, cartoon, scientific cartoon, a philosophical cartoon um, channel, and they have addressed the topic of gratitude and the psychological research and neuroscience research which has gone into the explicit practices um, which can be used to foster gratitude. And that involves gratitude journaling and things like this, external activities. Um, and they are helpful for people. And so <clears throat> with, that, with that idea in mind, the idea that fostering gratitude can be a uh, productive and healthy activity, um, it is not unreasonable for us to approach gratitude as 
uh, as a fence for our meditation. So if we find our mind is wandering, um, we can bring our attention back to the, the presence of our lives. I don't want to be abstract about this. I think that in my individual case at the moment, um, the present circumstance is such that I am in a foreign country, my visa is expired, but the Indian government is willing to extend my visa due to the circumstances. And I'm very fortunate in that respect. There are many governments who would be much less welcoming to many people across this globe um, under sim similar circumstances. I have a home at the moment. Uh, I think that many people in um, level four countries and level two countries like this one um, are struggling with lack of uh, space that they can call a home um, long term or temporarily while the pandemic is happening. And similarly, I am willing to bet that most of you have many things to be grateful for. Your friends, your family, your circumstances, your home, your city, your colleagues, and you can always come back to these things. And it's not that any of these things will ever be simple. A city is never a simple place. A family is never a simple uh, social arrangement. Friendships are never <laughs> entirely simple, but you can come back to what is true about those circumstances. You can revisit the truth of your personal situation that despite numerous complications right now that you have a roof over your head you have food to eat you have people who love you and whom you can love back and that is all there really is to be grateful for ultimately and It is not necessarily easy um, to do this. Regularly, our rational mind, our problem-solving mind, as it might like to think of itself, um, will often try to sort of wrangle a position where it feels as though it has a right to tell us that actually we don't have so much to be grateful for. We have so many other things that we could be or do or have. And in meditation, the mind, however much, however little, the mind begins to calm down and we can start to see the truths surrounding our lives, surrounding our circumstances much more clearly. And that gives us uh, a platform for gratitude, as it were. So rather than writing it down in a journal, it comes somewhat more naturally to us simply to feel it. And like anything else in this life, it is practice. If you spend time uh, working on physics, every minute of your life that you spend 
Solving physics problems makes you better at physics. Every minute or even moment that you spend anxious is practice at anxiety. Um, and we can guide ourselves toward more helpful, um, more positive practice experiences. The more minutes of our day that we spend with a calm mind, with a clear mind, um, acting on our intentions, the better we will get at it in the future. There was a, a small image that was sent out on a Vipassana a telegram group this morning. Um, and it was discussing the idea of contentment. And contentment, if gratitude is here on one side, contentment is sort of the other side. That um, <laughs> if fear and gratitude are on opposite sides of the circle, um, gratitude and contentment are, are side by side. Um, and they're closely related emotional states that if we feel like we have enough or perhaps even like we have plenty, um, we must feel some measure of gratitude around that. Um, flanking that feeling will be the feeling of um, gratefulness for the things that we have, the people that we have in our lives, the circumstances we have. Um, and in addition to this, this little poster that they sent um, mentioned the idea um, put forth by a historical Buddha, whether you believe in such a person or not is kind of irrelevant, but the idea supposedly put forth is that um, that there are two definitively rare people in the world. Uh, one rare type of person is the person who gives selflessly, gives without expecting anything in return, whether that's giving service, uh, to society or whether that is giving um, financial resources, uh, giving time, um, giving possessions, whatever it may be, um, this idea of selfless service, of um, selfless donation to causes that we feel are worthwhile. And the other rare type of person is the type of person who feels grateful. And I think we all feel grateful time to time. And so in that sense, we, we are all a bit rare. Um, but gratefulness and contentment are really adjacent and selfless service and selfless donation are sort of a continuation that if we feel content, if we feel grateful, if we feel more than content, like we have been given many opportunities that it has been our good privilege to be in a position where we are comfortable, where we feel safe, that is when it is easiest for us to help other people, to give them what they need, to give them our time, and um, that's a good indication of how well we are doing with gratitude. If we are contributing 
to society. And in particular, if we are contributing selflessly, and it's not some marketplace of favors, it's not that, and that we don't expect some fame or recognition for what we're giving, but we are simply giving so that others can enjoy the betterment of their lives. That is a clear indication of a healthy amount of gratitude, a healthy amount of contentment. We won't be perfectly content all the time. That's a ridiculous idea. Um, we won't be incredibly grateful all the time. That's equally ridiculous. There will be times when we feel frustrated, when we feel selfish, when we feel angry, and when we feel like we don't have enough, even for people who are very accomplished at managing, for lack of a better word, uh, their emotional states, who have learned to naturally pull themselves into these healthy emotional states, even for those people, there will be times of selfishness. There will be times where they are not engulfed in gratitude. But as I said, this is an incremental practice. So every moment that we spend grateful, every moment that we spend content, every moment that we spend contributing to others' welfare with our time, with our speech, with our actions, with our finances, that is practice for the same. If we are generous, we are practicing generosity and we will spend more time being generous. If we are content, then we are practicing contentment and in the future it will be easier for us to be content even in uncomfortable circumstances. So I would encourage everybody to try this today. Um, I generally am not giving a lot of specific advice, but I think that um, this is a, a good opportunity to experiment with this. We have 10 minutes of silent meditation. Um, today, if you've been using a guide, a guided meditation, um, I would recommend against it, just use a timer, 10 minute timer. And if your mind wanders, try using a fence of gratitude, this restriction on how far you let your mind wander into the imaginary and memories and everything else, fantasy, <laughs> wherever our mind goes. And if you find that your mind has wandered that far, then bring it back to gratitude as a fence and say, okay, this is the fence. I will be grateful for these things that I have consciously, um, intentionally, and then to bring the attention back to the breath, just the breath. You will find, and I'll only make a small note of this, that in time, these, the relationship here will become reversed. And it will be breath, simply breath, or sensations in the body if you happen to be doing Vipassana. It will be that object of meditation that changing object of meditation, which brings you into these emotional states, states of gratitude, 
states of um, giving and generosity, states of contentment. Um, there is little to no <laughs> reasonable explanation for that, why focusing on the breath for hours at a time would make a person feel content or grateful, perhaps even less so. Generous, why would that make you generous? Um, but this does seem to be the case. And so um, in the interim, in the beginning, uh, we can experiment with flipping that around and using gratitude as a foundation for our breath meditation for anapan rather than the other way around. You can pause and set up a timer now. Um, any timer will do for 10 minutes. I'll get my timer out and I will start it now.
of the family of <clears throat> our friends who invited us to come here to stay, I would very much like for them to know that we are incredibly grateful for this opportunity. I hope that you found the fence to be of uh, utility in your meditation today um, and that you are able to find some time in the rest of your day to explore the feeling of gratitude and see how it affects your day overall. Take care of yourselves. We will see you back here tomorrow. Goodbye.